So uh, Martin um, is a, a seasoned professional at Nokia, coming all the way uh, from uh, from Canada. Um, and maybe I should uh, keep it like that uh, for uh, <laughs> very short for now. And if you want to add something, sure. uh, feel free. Thank you. Okay. So welcome, Paris. Welcome everybody to the first Quantum Networks 2024. My name is Martin Charbonneau, or Martin. I'm indeed from Canada, seasoned professional, not sure, but you could see that there's a little bit of white air. Um, I lead Quantum Safe Networks uh, in the Network Infrastructure Business Group at Nokia. So the business group contains our IP division, our optical division, and our fixed networks division. We enable the world to connect, terrestrial and subsea. And I'm here today to talk about Quantum Safe Networks which is an outcome, which, uh, so my 20 minutes, I'll try to respect the time as much as I can, and please help me. Uh, well, my, my, my story goes why quantum safe networks, what quantum safe network, and how quantum safe network. So at the end, if you haven't heard that this is about an outcome, I would have failed my mission. So think about it. We're part of a journey a digital transformation journey that shapes industries, a journey where secure communication has been, is, and will be really key and essential to support that digital transformation. Digital transformation is more than a buzzword, right? It actually, like I said, shapes industries. Companies a decade or so ago have actually undergone, you know, embracing Industry 4.0 where data Analytics, AI, and machine learning has actually changed the way a company ideate about value, create value, and sells value. Digital transformation also changed our personal life and our professional lives. But what's the role of networks in that context? Classical networks, the networks that we know of today, the networks enabled us to connect, to communicate to one another. To be honest, marvelous piece of engineering, but they also come with challenges. You see, networks of today, you need to pose some actions to assure data privacy and data security. We've defined encryption algorithms. We define ways to use secure communication channel, access control lists, and so on, to give us the belief and the proof that we can actually put assured data privacy and security onto the internet. With this, we've built e-commerce platform. We've digitalized supply chain. We actually are changing our healthcare system from analog world to digital world. As we did this, technology advancement continued, and now we're ushering inside of the quantum era, where quantum-based technologies are being seen for the first time. Great promises in innovation in the field of sensing, computing, and also communication. We're ushering to, towards a place where the pure act of communicating using quantum communication will assure us of data privacy and data security thanks to quantum entanglement. We're not there yet, but some of my, of my industry colleagues will talk about QKD latest innovation in a few moments. Some others, I believe today, will also talk about advanced research in the field of quantum communication to give us, at one point, a classical network combined with a quantum-based communication network. So there you have it. The stage is set. We're actually ushering inside of a digital transformation journey where both classical networks of today and networks of tomorrow are playing a crucial role in assuring our data security and privacy. And this will, you know, is actually quite true, even in context of the greater disruptor that we're going to face, which is a, class, a quantum computer that is cryptographically relevant. So within this era, we will see powerful machines, quant quant cryptographically relevant quantum computers that stands to challenge our belief on data security and data privacy. The power of these machines, the way they compute information, stands to shatter you know, the, me the encryption methodologies that we've been using for the last few decades, breaking RSA breaking Diffie-Hellman, elliptic curves, and so on. The result, we're losing our data privacy and security. What have we done as an industry? Well, since we know this, 
we've actually started to a slew of innovation. Mathematicians and cryptographers have been developing new types of algorithms, post-quantum cryptography algorithms, that stands to actually resist of, you know, to the attack of these types of machine. Physicists, physics also answered the call. You'll hear about quantum key distribution today, and you'll also see that you know, in classical physics, new methodologies to generate, distribute, automate pre-shared keys also exist and can give us quantum safe cryptography. The reality is this machine does not, is not known to exist as we stand today. But there's another phenomena that actually you know, it talks to us about a need to a call to action, which is, oh boy. Is that, okay, thank you. Wow, let me, <laughs> I'm being blinded. Okay, the other, the other need, the, the, the need to act right now is, you see, the, the reality is as we digitalize more and more, we're actually becoming more and more connected. The more we digitalize, the more connected we become. And the more connected we become, the more vulnerable we are to cyber attacks. So in that context, threat actors are actually not standing still. They're trying to exploit our vulnerabilities every day. Harvesting our data today, including the public keys that we're mainly using inside of the uh, asymmetric PKI-based cryptography, and the encrypted data. With the tools that they have today, it's really hard to decrypt encrypted private message. But once a quantum computer that is scaled enough, performance enough, comes to, a, to existence, what has been harvested today can be decrypted tomorrow. We call this harvest now, decrypt later phenomena. Mission critical networks, time sensitive data, where longevity of secrecy is of importance, are really affected by this type of phenomena. The, I will also ascertain that as we digitalize everything in our societies, this is a type of phenomena that will affect all of us in all trades. As more digitalization becomes about, more connected we are and more vulnerable we are. Agencies throughout the world are recognizing this as this challenge, the quantum threat and the harvest now, decrypt later function. Governments, cybersecurity agencies are actually raising the alarm, making us more aware. That's the first step, awareness. Second, drawing new policies that ties, you know, cybersecurity, digitalization, and actually the act of making sure we have data privacy and data security uh, solutions to address the threat. Throughout the world, we see a unified set of messages towards answering the call. So a quick recap. We are became, become, becoming more and more digitalized. Our societies are becoming more and more digitalized, and the more we are, the more vulnerable we'll be to cyber attacks. New powerful machines will come about to exist called quantum computers. By the way, they already exist. They're not scaled enough and performance enough to actually break the code, break asymmetric cryptography as, we st as it stands, but they're vectoring towards that capability. So it's not a matter of if a quantum computer will be able to break asymmetric cryptography. It's more a matter of when will that happen. Meanwhile, Actors, threat actors, are harvesting your data, are trying to penetrate the defenses that we have every day, and sensitive encrypted data is being stored for a potential decryption uh, action tomorrow when such pow uh, powerful quantum computer exists, augmenting the nefarious action impact. Thus, for some, a zero-day vulnerability exists as it stands today. So there is a need to act now. So we need to compose an industry answer to all of this. And before you know, talking more about the industry answer that I'm proposing, I want us to just reflect on, on the set of three words that the World Economic Forum, I believe, were the first one to put out. We are part of now a new economic era, and it's called the quantum secure, uh, the quantum, yeah, quantum secure economy. It really talks about the fact that our economic system is be, being, you know, leaving the analog world, entering into the digital world, 100%, in the quantum era, where new powerful tools will be available, like a scale quantum computer, and we can never lose the security aspect. We have to make sure, as an industry, that we have a strong answer 
for the quantum secure economy. I propose to you all that this is called quantum safe networks. Quantum safe connectivity, which is an outcome. So above and beyond everything, an outcome, quantum safe connectivity, quantum safe network that can be applied on classical network today. We can apply classical, on classical networks, type of cryptographies that gives us quantum secure connectivity. We can then apply this as well and realize quantum safe networks as an outcome to, in tomorrow's network where classical networks will meet quantum based networks. It's an outcome that will be realized by the usage of technology, products and blueprints to match the infrastructures of a given type of provider and builder. It's an outcome that I believe will be valued by consumers, enterprises and different types of service providers. So let's look a little bit about how does one compose this outcome. At the macro level, you know, I only have 10 minutes left, keys and encryption. So quantum safe keys, top of the chart, and encryption at different layers, bottom of this chart. These are the two main essential ingredients for quantum safe communication. The keys, quantum safe keys, can come from two macro domain, mathematics or physics. In physics, I recognize classical physics, quantum physics. In mathematics, we know that there is going to be advancement and there are standardization activities right now in NIST for post-quantum cryptography algorithms to augment the capacity of PKI-based asymmetric encryption to actually generate a key exchange that will be quantum computer resistant. We know that in physics, some of our, our colleagues will talk about the advancement in quantum key distribution and others will talk about classical physics, pre-shared keys, automated and distributed to the nodes, to the crypt encryption devices as under another mean of quantum safe connectivity. At the network level, this will be applied to different OSI layer stack from an application perspective to a network layered protocol perspective. IP networks, NPLS networks, optical networks, Ethernet networks with encryption, most likely for data in flight, an AES-256 bulk encrypt encryption algorithms will be used, consuming these quantum safe keys. Now, let's look at the key attributes of quantum safe connectivity, quantum safe networks. I believe it's all about adaptation, its ability to adapt, its ability to scale, and its ability to evolve. So when I mean adapt, right, we need to foster to reach this quantum safe connectivity outcome at different layers, the application layer and the network layers. We need to be able to deploy quantum safe connectivity to existing networks and to new networks, existing IP networks, and PLS networks, Ethernet networks, optical networks, and also new networks. We need to be able to, I believe, adaptation also calls to the fact that some layers will more adapt itself to PKI-based post-quantum cryptography. Some other layers will more adapt themselves to physics-based quantum safe cryptography. And of course, no networks are, are the same. Networks are really heterogeneous we need to have blueprints that are really malleable to match and fit different network architecture of our customers. Scale, automation. We're very good to talk about automation, but we, from a connectivity perspective, we need to add the word cryptography. We need to automate the cryptography lifecycle of keys to the encryption layers. We need to talk about how keys are generated, are distributed, are rotated, are actually monitored from a health perspective, that, that, that needs to be part of our journey. We need to talk about scale in terms of economical factor. We need quantum safe connection at the megabits level, gigabits level, terabits level, and, and more. And we need to talk about scale in terms of performance. We need performant quantum safe connections where throughput, latency, jitter has been taken into control on a per application layer basis. And then evolution, evolution. We heard the term crypto agility, mainly applied to PKI-based cryptography where post-quantum algorithms are being designed 
and going to be rolled out, and maybe some others will come afterwards. So we need to really, when we build products, to be able to agile, agilely upgate, update our products, being physics-based products or mathematics-based products, to the technology curve as the, the innovation continues. So adapt, scale, and evolve are the t three key attributes from my perspective of realizing and sustaining this outcome. So one thing I wanted to make very clear, and I'm going to dedicate a few, just a few moments on this, is defense and depth. I personally do not believe in realizing the outcome of quantum safe connectivity that this is a winner take all type approach. I believe we have, as an industry, we're evolving on two crypto system, AES-256, most likely for bulk encryption for data in flight, plus different types of keys, quantum safe keys, that comes from mathematics or physics, classical physics or quantum physics. So we have tools. I believe that when you look at a no, a no SI stack, where there's the different types of connections at the application level and at the network level, one can marry with different degree of dosage the usage of mathematics-based keys or physics-based keys. I'm not trying to, to, to dictate exactly which layer uses what keys. I'm trying to you know, get the industry to think about it's not a winner-takes-all approach. It's actually more a layered type approach that I think we're going to usher towards, having more than one layer of defense, but adapted. We have two types of crypto system, mathematics and physics, at the macro level. We have different layers of the OSI stack that have different types of connection, dynamic connections, ephemeral in time, versus persistent connections, connections that we set up, that they'll be there for a long time. So that allows us to actually compose quantum safe connectivity using different types of crypto systems. And we should actually leverage this and develop what I call the one plus one or one plus n type of architecture. Now, one cannot do quantum safe networks as an outcome alone. This is what we call at Nokia a prime example of the power of N. A power of N where application providers, connectivity enablers, and also quantum safe key makers are working together jointly in a collaborative fashion to actually realize the right technology, the right products, and the right blueprints to give this industry this outcome of quantum safe connectivity, quantum safe networks. So it's not an act of one. It's an act of many, but all aiming towards this outcome. So in closing, we are part of a digital transformation journey. That's what our societies are undergoing. We have a role to play in this context. There is a quantum threat. There is a harvest now decrypt later phenomena at play every day. It will only accelerate as we digitalize more and more as I call it, as plan B, the analog world will never exist, failure of the digital world would be dramatic. In that context, we have a role to play. I believe as an industry, we should rally our voices, align our voices towards a common outcome, enabling quantum safe networks or quantum safe connectivity. We have to work together to get that. It's gonna be an outcome that's gonna be valued by consumers, enterprises, service providers, mission critical builders and enablers, for sure. But fundamentally even more, it's an outcome that will give us this unshakable trust into the digital infrastructure that we're being asked to build for ourselves and secure against the quantum threat today, but also give that security, a persistent security trust into our digital infrastructure for generations to come. So, if you like this, please join us on enabling quantum safe networks. And I wish us all a really good day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Uh, very well done. It's clear, I think, the time to act is now. We have room for one quick question. Hi, good morning, Martin. Thank you for a great presentation. I'd like to ask a little bit more about the orchestration aspect. Uh, I don't think you touched on that in much detail. I was interested what that, what, what, what orchestration means in that context. So if you're into an outcome where there's different ways to actually get quantum safe cryptography, different layers acting together, 
in a defense in depth. So at one point, you'll need to orchestrate your, your key deliveries into a specific layer to assure an SLA. So where I'm going with this is crypto periods has to be respected, right? I didn't talk about crypto period, but a key is actually as good as its crypto period. So connectivity that we build to enable the world you know, is supported by SLAs of 99.999 today. Cryptography of quantum safe connectivity should also have 99.999 availability. So by orchestration, what I wanted to, to say, to, to talk about is that I could foresee different quantum safe domains servicing a specific layer in an orchestrated manner to never miss a crypto, safe, a crypto period. So one needs to orchestrate the availability of quantum safe keys. They may not always come from a single domain. I can think about classical physics and quantum physics working together on sourcing keys for a specific layer, assuring the crypto period delivery. So one needs to think about the overall orchestration of connectivity and cryptography across multi-domain for assuring that the layer is always quantum safe. Okay. I'll be around all day, so if there's more questions for myself, I'm more than happy to, uh, to take them. Thank you.